How do you learn the language that people really speak on the street? Like when you're learning Chinese, how do you know that you're learning the language that you're going to meet in everyday life that people are going to be using on the internet? Well, you get your language from those people. The fantastic thing about living in this generation is that we have access to the internet and we have access to amazing samples of native speaker language at our fingertips, no matter where we are on the planet. I mentioned in my previous clips about how one of the benefits of learning languages like like Chinese, Vietnamese, is that we can actually listen to and read things from the source. We don't have to wait for our media organizations or certain people to put clips out talking about things that people have done. We can actually follow the news, we can follow articles, we can follow things going up on Twitter, on Weibo, on whatever it is, and follow it ourselves, and we'll be able to understand that. Now, it's one thing to be able to access these things, but you've got to understand what you're reading as well. So I'm going to walk you through some of the steps that I would do if I were learning new vocabulary. Today we're going to be using Chinese, but actually the techniques that I'm using in this clip, you can use for any language. Now there are some fantastic tools that I'm going to implement for Chinese, but most of these tools will work for many other languages as well, like Thai, Vietnamese. Vietnamese, maybe you need a few tweaks, but you can do it across the board. So let me show you what I'm going to do. You can see here right now, I've got the tweet uh, that was originally put up, supposedly, by the Chinese tennis star Peng Shui. Now, there's no reason for me to believe that this wasn't her, but this is the tweet. Now, you can see it's all in Chinese, and if you look at Western media, they talk about what this tweet said, but I think there are very few people in the Western world that have probably gone through and really understood line by line what this was about and the language that she used. I'm going to use this clip not so much to get into the semantics of what she was speaking about, but I'll show you the steps that I would take if I were wanting to learn the language and learn the vocabulary to allow me to understand what she was writing and get into the head of Peng Shui, and then understand lots of the other stuff that followed on. And from this, this very tweet here, I'm going to build up a really, really rich source of vocabulary that's going to teach me. You'll be amazed how much functional, valuable language is in just this tweet. So what's the first thing we have to do? Well, we have to get the text. I'm using a Mac now, and the latest updates of Mac are fantastic, um, in that you don't have to do anything. You can just hover your mouse over any text, and you can just drag it down, and you can see that it's actually highlighted the text. So if I command C, and then command V, and paste it into Google here, well, you've got the text. You can see it's all copied perfectly here. Now, if you don't have a Mac, there are many other ways to do it. I'm sure on Windows, maybe you've got um, this OCR function as well. But another really good hack, well, there are two. If you're on a mobile phone, you can just open up uh, Google Lens or Google Photos, which has Google Lens built in. If you're on an Android, it's built into the actual Photos app. And you can just hit Lens and Text Select, and it will do exactly this. Another thing you can do, I've got Google Drive here, and so you can actually just drag the file into Google Drive. Yes, drag an image file. Now, it can be most image formats, and if you then right-click the image there, open with Google Docs, now, Google Docs, what they're going to do now is going to do an OCR scan of that as well. And you'll not only get a copy of the actual image, but you'll get all of the text from that image. Here's hoping. It looks like this is an image placeholder. Here it comes. And if I scroll down, look at that. There's all the text. And so these are two ways that you can get the text. You get a bit of funny formatting, but you can just get rid of... I actually like using... Um, plain text. So one of the first things I'll do is just highlight everything. I'll come into Google Docs and I'll just do clear formatting because the main thing that I'm interested in is the text. But from here, how do you get words? Because you can see that here you've got basically no spaces between words. And we know in Chinese, especially Mandarin, we love these two syllable words. However, there are many single syllable words and there are actually three syllable, four syllable words. So how do you know what's what? Well, this is where we pull a plugin in. So you can just Google uh, Chinese tools, Chrome extension, and you can see I've already installed this, but if you haven't installed it and you're using Chrome, you can just install in Chrome. And I've used this tool for years. I'll show you how it works. 
just as long as you have text within any type of Chrome browser window. And so what happens, just as long as you've got the text open uh, somewhere in the browser, I can highlight this. And so I could highlight it all. Let me just highlight down to here just for this sample. And I'm going to click on there and you can see this menu comes up, Chinese tools. And you have all of these really cool options. So let me select first, convert to um, Pinyin or Douyin. Douyin is the actually the older form of transliteration that was originally done by the Kuomintang and then is the main way rather than Pinyin that they use in Taiwan to transliterate Mandarin Chinese. So if I click on that, bang, what you see here is really cool. It's opened up now. It's a third party site that it's opened up in, but you have all of the text now and it's actually segmented your words. You can see two syllable words, one syllable word, some of them three, four. Now I've looked at this, it's not fantastic. There are other libraries you could use in Python that will do it for you as well, but this is a cheap and nasty way of doing it for you. And so one of the first things you could do with this is just now start to read over the Chinese. So you've got the pinyin there. So if you didn't know it, you could start reading. So you can see the pinyin on top and you've got the Chinese on the bottom. So this is a great way to practice your pronunciation and the way it's segmented. Now looking at it here, it's a little bit off, but it's pretty good. And it's going to get you into a good place and you can start developing native rhythms in that. Now, another thing that I would do if you want to get the translations. Now, you've got translations of words or translations of the whole text. If you want to get a gist of the text, well, you want to come back to Google Docs and paste it in here. You can start getting that idea here of how Google has translated. Now, we all know, though, never trust Google Translate 100% that it's going to translate everything. And you can see here, yeah, it's given you the gist, but it hasn't gotten into the real nitty gritty if you're a native Chinese speaker understanding what's being said. So how do you do that? Well, there's a few things to do. I like to take it from a learning Chinese point of view, so I want word lists. So if we come back to this here, you can see vocabulary list on top. So watch what happens when I click on vocabulary list. Look at that. That's absolutely amazing. It's not only given me vocabulary lists, it's passed the words for me and it's also color coded the tones. But you'll notice here that these vocabulary lists, because of the formatting, they've paginated them. And so I've only got 25 per line. But the great thing about this is that this whole search that I've just done and vocabulary list is just a public page now. So what I can do is take this URL up top here and copy it. And now if I come into a cell and I hit equals because I'm doing a formula and all I have to say is import HTML and paste this in. Now I know that I've done this in other clips as well. Uh, I'm going through more of these, but basically if you want to learn how to do all of this, a little bit of tech skill can go a long way. This is what Minecraft is all about. So come into jacademy.com and you can learn all of this through Minecraft and you can scan the QR code as well and come in and join in the group. Now I want to get the table. I just know that the formatting of these are using tables and this is the first table on the page. This is how you do it in Google Sheets. And when I hit enter, bang, look at that. Now notice where that page's vocab list was limited to 25 per sheet. Now I have all of these words down here. Now you'll notice that there are a ton of words. It goes down to 585. There's a little quirk with what happens here. You get repetition. And so there's 585 lines here. However, many of those are repeated words. So what I'm going to show you are a few techniques that you can start building out your vocab words without repetition. Now notice here, I've got import HTML. I don't want that to stay there. I just want this text. So the first thing I always do when I import text like that, I'll copy it first and then I'll delete that original cell. And then what I do is I just come in here and I paste special values only. And that means that I've got a text copy of all of the text there. Uh, nothing else. And then what I can do is just download the comma separated file CSV or as a TSV. I personally actually like TSV, but today we might use CSV for this. Um, and you have a comma separated file of all of these words, but it's not in the format I like it. Now, one way to get unique um, non duplicate. So you would dedupe them, deduplicate. So one way I could just do unique now E to H cause I know that's the, 
um, start of the first column of Chinese character. And you can see here, bang, I've created a unique set of characters for me. And it's gone down from 500 or so to 296. So that's the first way I can create a unique one. Now, if you want to keep though those unique um, numbers, because sometimes they're really good for storing them as data objects. If you're building up your own database of vocabulary that you're using, there's something else you can do. And so you remember just now I downloaded that as a CSV. Let's jump into the terminal. Now, again, if you want to learn how to do all of this, this is what Minecraft is about. It's not about just learning language, but it's giving you some tech skills as well. So you get superpowers when it comes to learning language. So right now I'm in my terminal and I've saved that as a CSV file. So watch what happens if I open it in Visidata. Look at that. I have everything down here. I can go down to the bottom, Shift G, takes me down, there we go, 585. And you can see that they are all still there. All the duplicates, everything is still there. So the way that I can dedupe very, very easily here. And so I've just hit the exclamation uh, key here on this and it's made the Chinese character as my key uh, index that I can put everything against. And one really cool thing that I can do is just hit Shift X to get a frequency of which words are most common. Look at that. So what I need. So if you want to know what are the most common words you need to know, this is how you do it. Now, as you're learning Chinese, you're going to get to a point where these individual single words, you will have pretty much learnt most of them that you'll need to read any text. But the real thing that you're going to be wanting to learn as you start to get more and more advanced are these two syllable words, three syllable words. And so the really cool thing about doing this now is I can actually create a table of only the two syllable plus words. The way you do it is to type Z pipe and I want to get the length of Chinese is greater than one. So that means anything with more than one syllable, they're the words I want. And you can see that it's selected in orange there. Now, if I want to have a new table made up of only those words, I just hit double quotes. Bang, I've got a new table of how many words? 190 new words. And so what I can do now is create a brand new table of these with the meanings, pulling the meanings from the original list. So I've saved that single table there called multiple. So that's a multiple sheet. And what I want to do is just do a join between this multiple table. So I do S for select that and my original sheet, which is this basic sheet here. And I just want to do a join of only those words. So I hit and. And I choose outer. Bang. And look at that. So now I have only the words that are more than one syllable and all of those. Now you can see something funny has happened here in that they've been reduplicated, but that's okay because here we have a dedupe function. So I can just type dedupe rows, bang. So all of that stuff that I had done in Google Sheets, I can just do with one single command here and I have all of these. And so I can just save these as a multi uh, syllable word list from Peng Shui, whatever it is that I want to save. And I have my very own reference list now. Now, the things that you can do with this now, you can import them, export them, make flashcards, you can make space repetition. If you have a Mac, there's something really cool that you can do. I'll show you now because you can actually hear these back. Somebody sent me a message just yesterday. How do I learn Cantonese pronunciation? How do I hear Cantonese? Because if you go to Google, say Google Translate, they only have Mandarin. Um, this is a really easy way to do it. It's built into Mac OS. So I'll show you how to do it now. So I've saved this uh, as a TSV file, CSV, CSV. Now I've shown this in other clips before, but I've done it for other languages as well, but I can use it for Chinese. I know that in Mac, the Mandarin voice, her name is Ting Ting. So if I want this current word in Vim, we call it C word. Have a look at this. I just hit colon and I type say. So that's going to use Mac's own say program. I want to use the voice of Ting Ting and I want to say the current word. So C word, I just make sure that that is in brackets there and fashion. That's pretty cool. I can come to here and it will say it again. 
发声。Now, what if I want the pronunciation in Cantonese? Well, it's easy. I just change the name, so I can just pull that up again and change Ting Ting to I think it's Sinti. Fasang. Look at that. Let's pick another word. How about this? Nintin. That's so cool, and so you can actually go down. Now it's a pain in the neck if you have to type it every time you're doing. So the great thing in Vim, you can actually create a macro. So what I'll do is I'll just come. I want to do one for Mandarin. I'm just going to set it to W. So I hit Q. I'm going to record the macro into W. So Q W, and all I'll do is exactly what I just typed now. So I'm going to do Thai first, and if I hit Enter now. 发生 And I hit Q again to close the macro. Watch what happens now when I hit at W. Fasang. And I can do that over any word. Let's have a look at this. Mayo. Mayo. That's so awesome. I can do that on any single word down here, and I can start to hear what the language is actually sounding like. Sangchu. Now that's in Cantonese. Sorry, I can actually do exactly the same thing for Mandarin. So let's do it. I'm going to record, say, the Mandarin into E. So I'll do Q E. 相处 Stop that there, and let's see if it works again. Ah,、uh, 就是就是 There you go, and it works. So this is fantastic. You can even hear the entire text if you want. So supposing I want this selection, and for all of that to be said into the Say program, I can just do it like this. I know I can't say it clearly. I said it, but it's no use. Wow, that's pretty cool.、Uh, I'm going to escape out of that and just stop it there.、Um, but these are tools that you have at your fingertips. They're all totally free, and this is actually how I learn vocab. Whether it's Cantonese, Mandarin, or whatever language it is I'm learning, I use the terminal a lot just because I can manipulate things. But between the terminal. Google Sheets, Google Translate. I can actually take this back in. If you do Minecraft, I show you actually how you can actually build using HTML and some style sheets. You can develop your own, even、um, transliterations for phonetic pronunciation and the transliteration of the meaning within the same text. You'll be able to build your own text. You can build your own wikis, your learning wikis, databases of words that you've done. Everything. You don't have to use third-party apps. You can use all of your own tools. Build them yourself. Build what works for you. The key is you need really good specimens. Now, in the future, I'm going to go into the language here, maybe of Peng Shui, and we can see what all the fuss is about. Because it's one thing to see a translation, but it's another thing to actually start to really feel、um, the deeper meaning, some of the idioms that we use, some of the words that were chosen, why they were chosen like that strategically. So we're going to be able to go into the language. And really understand that. I won't do that in this clip because it's already gone on for too long as it is. But I'll put that in another post. But I really hope this has inspired you to start to see what's possible to get language learning resources out there. Just as a comparison, this is a learn Shanghainese book, and this is like your typical dialogue. Wang Xiaojie, 你好，侬好。Um, you know, hello, Wang Xiaojie. Oh, is that Xu Jingli? Oh, very nice to meet you. You don't want to learn language、uh, like this. Maybe after the first couple of weeks of learning, this gets very boring. But if you can get into stuff like this, this is the language that's really used, and this is the language you're really going to want to learn. And so now you have the tools to be able to do that and start to create a database, doing flashcards and all of this other stuff. If you want to learn it again. Come to Minecraft. In Minecraft, we have an amazing community, and we mix tech with really deep linguistic understanding, getting the language into your body, so you can start using the language much closer to the way that native speakers of the language use. Whether it's Thai, whether it's Chinese, whether it's Vietnamese, you're going to be able to get a much more authentic version of that language in you. So come to Minecraft. Let me know how you go using some of these tools. What other tools do you use? I know there's some great ones for Netflix for subtitles. Let me know in the comments below. Don't forget to click like, subscribe, scan the QR code, join the Discord server. I'm Stuart J Raj. I'll see you on the other side.